Hi, I'm Cerise Maddock. This is your Salina Media Connection News Desk. There's still plenty of time to register to vote and, of course, to vote before the big election on November 3rd. I sat down with Jamie Das, Saline County Elections Officer, to see how things are going in her office. Okay, registering to vote. Um, the deadline is October 13th. So if they are turning 18 on or before Election Day, um, they'll need to register. If they moved, if they've um, changed their name, um, or if they've never been registered in Kansas, they will need to be registered by that day. Um, they can do that um, online um, at the Secretary of State's website, or they can um, do it on our website. So they can go to votechaos.org and they can register. Um, they can also come in our office and register to vote as well, or they can call us and we'll mail them out an application. Um, we are also doing late night voter registration on October 8th, 9th, and 13th. So from 5 to 8, we will also be open on those days for people that can't come in until, you know, they get off work. So, so we will be open those days. Okay, so several different reasons but this year has been a little different for you mm -hmm. people are not wanting to get out as much they're wanting to do more online or have you mail them um, applications tell me a little bit about that and how that's affecting your office and what the numbers you're seeing are how they're different um, people are requesting to get their ballots um, by mail more this year obviously um, with the pandemic and not wanting to get out um, normally we have 4,500 or so um, in normal election, general elections. Um, we're about 6,800 at this point. We are getting tons of applications every day. Um, we've actually only processed up till September 17th, so we're, you know, a week behind. Um, but we're getting those every day. There's five or four of us working on them all the time. So um, it's... It's a lot, but we're uh, processing those so they can either um, print those applications off of our website so they can go to Celine.org, go to the elections page and it's right there. They can get get it there. Um, they can also get on the Secretary of State's website, print it off from there. Um, and uh, they can either fax it in, email it in. They can even bring it in or have someone bring it in for them. Um, they just need to make sure they get it all filled out and signed. And then the last day to request an application by mail is October 27th. Um, for people who have requested these, um, I actually sent a mailer out back in May. Um, and some people requested their November ballot back then. Um, we can't actually mail until after, um, obviously, the end of voter registration. So if you're looking for your ballot, it will not come out, be mailed until October 14th. So um, I know some states obviously are already mailing, but Kansas law doesn't allow us until, to mail until the 14th of October. So that's when you'll be looking for it um, a few days after that. So, Very good point. Um, nationally, there's been concern about holdups with the mail, going slow, a lot of stuff that we're not sure about. Has that, have you seen that affecting your office at all? Does it seem like things are going slow or are they moving right about the same pace? Um, I see that things will probably go slower in the general election. Um, primary doesn't have a big turnout as obviously the, the November election will. Um, so um, mail ballots going out, I don't think that'll, that'll be an issue. I see it coming back might be a little tougher but there are a lot of options for voters in regards to returning their ballot. So um, as soon as you get it, you can vote it and send it back. Um, to return your ballot by mail, it only requires uh, one stamp. Um, so um, you can bring it into our office. Um, there is a place on there to designate someone else to bring it in for you. So if some, you have a husband or wife, one of you want to bring it in, somebody, they can carry the other person's ballot back in for them. Um, I also created or put out a ballot box in the Circle Drive. So anytime you can go out and, and put, drive through and put your ballot in there. It's out on the south side of the city county building. And um, we check that about four times a day um, and get those ballots in here. So, I mean, there's many options to, to do that. So, um, or 
like I said, you can come in and drop it off anytime. You don't have to wait till election day. And then you can even drop it off at your polling site. So any polling site in the county. So if you're out um, on election day and you have your mail ballot, um, you can drop it off at any, if you see vote here, you can drop it off at that polling site. They will have a ballot box for those ballots and they will bring them back to our office for you. Um, one question that's come, or there's a couple of questions that we've had a lot of that I'd like to get out there is, if I request a ballot, do I have to mail that one or can I go to the polls? If we issue you a ballot, you can only get one. So you have to vote that ballot or you have to bring it in and we can um, accept that ballot and then you can vote here. But you, you, have, you can only have one or the other. So if we send you one, you decide not to vote it, then you go to the polls, you're going to be voting a provisional ballot because the records that the poll worker will see is that you've already been issued one. So that makes it, you know, you're going to have a few extra steps if you decide not to vote the one that we mailed you. Um, also, if you decide that you don't want to do a mail ballot and you've already requested one, we actually have to have something in writing. So we have a cancellation form that um, you'll need to fill out um, to not get a ballot by mail. So if you've already filled one out, um, you'll need to fill that out to, to remove your name from getting a mail ballot. Um, we also have sample ballots out now. So you can go to our website, um, the election department, and see your sample ballot. Or you can go to um, uh, myvoteinfo uh, dot org and you can look at your sample ballot on there as well. So. so it seems to me that Saline County and with direction from the state is truly addressing this idea that people are going to vote more than once. What you're saying with your process is a mail-in ballot uh, shows all the tracking mm -hmm. and then you can't go to the poll and vote again. Is that uh, something that you want to urge people to try not to get caught up in because it slows down the process. Mm -hmm. It's not only going to slow down um, our process, it's going to slow down their process because if they go to the polls, they're going to have to fill out a whole lot of information just to vote a provisional ballot to try to vote again. Um, but this isn't just Saline County, this is statewide. So statewide, that's Kansas has our tracking in place and our voter registration system that if we get an application from you it's tracked into your voter registration record if we issue you a ballot it's in your record if we get a ballot back from you it's in your record um, if we get a provisional ballot it's in your record so only one of those is going to count so uh, kansas has that system in place and that's statewide and so i don't foresee us having some of the issues that maybe another state might have. So, Excellent. And in sort of a general way, have you had questions in here? I know, again, rumors, talking, um, that this is going to be a, a complicated election. We have um, uh, the president saying he's not going to uh, concede easily. What do you want to say to voters in terms of just getting the process done and moving through it and not paying attention to that stuff? Well, my job as, as the election administrator is uh, it's customer service and it's making sure that everybody gets a chance to vote and, and the process is smooth for them. So um, I think it's, you know, just go in, you know, get informed, get out there and vote, look at your sample ballot, make sure your voter registration is up to date. And, and and do your part to make sure your vote counts. And and then um, the results will be what they will be. I mean, you can, but you can say that you took part and, and put your vote in there for the people that you want in there, so. And one last question, unless there's anything you wanna add um, on the overall looking at the pandemic, looking at, you know, a lot of talk about the election. Do you have expectations on what the numbers are going to be for this general election? You kind of have some things that might make it up, go up, some that might make it go down. Do you have any kind of idea what you're looking at for numbers? Um, you know, every, uh, every election that we've done, you know, I keep thinking, okay, 
you know, this is going to make a, an impact and, you know, but I don't know if just the numbers is just going to change where these votes are coming from or if it's actually going to impact the people turning out. Um, obviously having contested races um, improves the turnout, always does. I mean, that's what makes people get out and vote. And we have several races, not only um, nationally, but at, at the state level. So um, not so much at the county level. Um, we also have uh, the jail question that's on the ballot in November, which um, is, um, I think, something that, you know, people have forgotten about with the, with the presidential election. Um, they've forgotten about some of the local stuff that's really important that's going to impact them as well. And so I think that's something that they want to, they need to read about and get informed, which they can find out on our county website. Um, but um, I, I think... I'm hoping it increases our turnout. I really do. Um, but normally we have about 62 to 63% turnout. Um, um, I would love to see more, but I don't know if it's just going to change where we're at. So, um, but like I said, I think it's just important that people kind of look at their sample ballot and make sure that they've read about everybody. And because it is a big ballot this year, it's actually a 17 inch ballot, which we haven't had in a while. So there's a lot of information. We also have the judges on there this year, um, both Supreme, well, all three, Supreme Court, the Court of Appeals, and our local judges, um, which um, kind of get forgotten in all of this. So yeah, there's just a lot to look over, so. Is there anything you would like to add that I didn't get to? Um, I just want to remind people just to kind of, um, there has, some people don't vote, but in presidential years, so just kind of check where your polling place is in case yours might have changed. Um, we did change a couple of them. Um, uh, Precinct 23, or I'm sorry, 29, which was at Arbor Court, we moved to the first Nazarene church. Um, Presbyterian Manor, obviously, we had to move it to the first Christian church. So um, if you go out to our website and the elections page, it says, uh, where is my voting location you can click on that put in your information and find it and make sure that you know where to go on on uh, election day and we start voting in our office october 19th so um you can come in here and vote early thanks for joining us that's your salina media connection news desk have a good evening